Hello Disc Golf fans, this is another Gatekeeper Media production presenting you the 2022 New Jersey State Championships presented by Innova and very big shout out and thank you to South Jersey Disc Golf. My name is Chris German. Along beside me, I have Team Millennium and Team Gatekeeper, Nick Hansen. How you doing, bud? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, Gatekeeper has been filming New Jersey States for quite some time. It was one of the first events we really done. So it's really cool to film this feature card here with uh, Andrew Fish. We also have the local Chris Villa, Delaware Deucer, Mike Moser hasn't been seen on coverage too, too much as of late. And then uh, everyone should know Michael Johansson coming and rounding it out. So you can see we have a couple big names on there. Matt Bell, no stranger there. Kevin Kiefer and Dylan Horse. Tell us about uh, Fish's bag. Um, so Fish is a, a Discraft sponsored player. He's throwing zones, roaches, the Hornet, Wasp, um, Undertaker. <clears throat> You know, for his stable shots, he's throwing that force. I would say he's definitely going to lean on some of those throughout the rounds this weekend. And then Chris Villa with Team Westside, he's going to rely on that gatekeeper quite a bit. Uh, the stag would be another one, as well as the maverick for any type of hyzer flips or turnovers. And then Mike Moser, he has that champion turn. He is very well known with that turn, hyzer flipping it. We're going to see a lot of great carving shots here throughout these woods and i see on there white kc rock i think anybody that throws a rock knows that those are some of the best rocks made and on to michael here he's gonna be throwing the common a lot i would say um he's also gonna be having those bangers out there making putts and you know he definitely throws that crank too wouldn't you say yeah i'm very excited all these guys are very technical really good backhand players and we're gonna see a lot of really good golf at this uh, pretty new course here at Tranquility. Yeah, some really good woods golfers here. So we're gonna start on hole one. Tell me about this one. So hole one is a 303 uh, foot par three. Players are gonna be throwing a flat to then hyzering shot where they just need to get it under that um, one tree you see in the middle of the fairway. They hyzer either on the left or right of that. They're gonna be looking at a putt for two today. So Andrew Fish is starting out on the box. Looks like he's gonna go overhand. The overhand is going to be a good shot on some of these holes where the rough is pretty tall on both right and left side um, because once you get up the basket, it's going to be a clear, you know, just drop in from the top side. Yeah, and if you have the line there to go up and over, I mean, take advantage of it. Yeah, I'm not really an overhand player by much. Uh, I don't throw the tomahawk or the thumber much, but if I had it, I'd probably throw it here. So Chris Villa on the box. So hole one actually played as one of the harder holes coming in just a little bit under par. Um, I could see that. Um, we have some holes that are pretty open here at this course. Uh, the course is definitely a deuce or die, I would say, for the open players here, as we're going to see some really good scores today on the course. Mike Moser, this is looking really good with the standstill. Like you said, a little bit of a hyzer and should be up by the circle. Wow, that's a, that's a really good standstill from there, I would say. Yeah. So Michael Joe Hansen. Going a little, little higher with the hyzer, and that looks like it's not coming back as quick. Yep, but he did get around that tree, so he's going to have an open jump putt from there. Yeah, like you were saying, this rough looks pretty rough if you do end up in it. Luckily, Villa does find himself just right on the edge. He's really good with these little turnover shots from about 150 out. And that's going to be right under the basket to get his three... The rough here is, like you said, very rough. At times, you could throw into it, and it was bouncing actually back out into the fairway because <laughs> of how extreme it was in parts, I would say. Wow. Very thick. As you can tell, Fish here is trying to figure out his best way to actually get back to his disc right now. It's going to be in there. Maybe <laughs> he turbo. Can't, he, can't even see him. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> have a, was that a turbo out of there? Yeah, it was. So... So he's basically tapping in with two uh, like overhand throws, basically. Yeah, and I think um, Michael's a little closer than I thought he was. Confidence there. Probably was only halfway there. He's already picking up his mini. Knew that one was in. Yeah, and what would you say? Would you like to start a round with a putt kind of like that from maybe 2025, or would you rather have a nice tap in to kind of start your round? I know everyone likes a tap in, but I think the mental game, I think starting with a, 
Oh. Longer putt and making it, I think, is a good confidence booster. I think I would rather have the tap in and give me birdie because then I've already got a two. Whereas if I miss like, the 25, 28 footer. Like this right now with, yeah, with Moser. I'm going to be like already a little annoyed because I was just in the circle in the first hole and had mm. a good opportunity for birdie. Good He's going to tap in for three, though. And um, honestly, like you. You're going to need to be getting birdies here. Threes aren't very good, and you're going to lose strokes on a lot of holes with the three. Hole two here, um, a very similar shot, 321 feet. It's a little more open to throw like a wider hyzer, um, but a very similar shot shape to the last hole. Yeah, I would say so. These guys are probably going to make this look pretty easy, as this should just be, a, like you said, a big hyzer, righty hyzer from all these guys. Yeah, you could throw a fast speed disc and I would say a little high hyzer, just like a little dump, or you could just throw a flat mid range and get to the circle pretty easily. This looks a little wide from Fish. It does, and it also looks a little fast, but he's gonna probably gonna be just past the pin actually, having a putt there, as you can see it fell, fell back into the fairway. And Andrew Fish being the good putter that he is, I'm sure. He's no stranger to making putts from those distances. Here you go. So this is looking really good from Villa. Hey. Oh, did that flash the basket it there? It looked like it. Dang. It's a good skip. Should be inside the circle. Starting early. Um, we'll get some action. i like to see that. Maybe we can get an ace out here today. I think so. I mean, this course, from what I've seen of it, all these holes are pretty attackable. That one right there as well. That Ooh. one came right across it. Just in front it looked like, but he's up there. Anywhere up here is good. I mean, as soon as you get past those trees, you're basically inside the circle for a putt. So it's going to be about the putting today, and I would say less about throwing mm. because you're going to need to get your twos out here. So that's two putts here from Moser from about circle's edge that he's kind of just – little left and just kind of hit right off the basket on both of them and it looks like mj is gonna have about the same putt as his whole one putt and yeah, we're gonna see if he can be the only one to start off two down confidence he love cashes it. it i love when he knows it's going in he's already down picking up his mini that or he Bam. like just releases the disc and he'll turn around on the yeah. keypad. I want hopefully we'll see that today. Then you know he's playing good. Yeah. He's fun to watch in the woods, that's for sure. And we'll see that in a couple holes here. Yeah. And Andrew Fish a little closer than I th thought, and he's able to can the birdie. So he's probably just pin high there and some of these holes, you're actually, I think there's like six of these exact holes on the course today. Mm. So if you got that shot dialed, you're going to get some birdies. Yeah, maybe in the lefty, maybe uh, right to left finishing holes isn't the best for me, but hey. Okay. Got to work on that sidearm then. Yeah, you got to figure it out. <laughs> Moser's going to tap in his par. Still no red, so something to walk away with yep and we're on the hole three so hole three is 252 foot par three uh, most players are going to throw the turnover shot or the sidearm on that left side for our right hand players i would say um i did see that there is a hyzer gap on the right that was pointed out to me up there high ah. a little more technical here on the third hole this is the kind of the first glimpse of any types of woods. So it looks like Michael Johansson's going to catch the top there. Looks like he kicked a little bit there, but I mean, he got probably long enough down the fairway to get a jump up. So fish is probably going to. Yeah, this is. Ooh. Kick to that right side as well. Looks like there's that one guardian tree kind of down there near Circle's Edge that you kind of have to miss later in the flight. Um, as long as you kind of hit your gap, 
that's kind of the only thing that's going to mess with you. Yep. See them all taking that up the middle route there. Yeah. Um, no one's really been able to kind of peer it down there, though, for, for being the distance that it is. There's just enough small trees on the hole to make it nice and difficult, even though it's only a 250-foot shot. And Moser just throws that rock just kind of right down there and gets about pin high. We'll see a lot of those today out of him, I bet. So yeah, it looks like MJ just kicked a little bit over there to the right, but he should be able to get up and down, no problem. Oh yeah, he's right up there. There he is on track. Got on finally, third hole. Better late than never, right? Yeah. Delaware Deucer getting getting his first two out there. Yep, here we are. Hopefully we see a couple more out of him. It's quite the nickname. Yeah, he's really uh he's really <laughs> taking down a lot of wins out here i'll just say that i mean before i've ever been in the sport and for years i mean you being out more from the midwest and out in colorado uh mike moser being just one of the legends in the sport out of delaware and dominating <laughs> dominating force in the northeast you would say yeah for a long time yeah. i'd say especially in this area and then kind of like a joe revere maybe a daryl nodlin in relation to what you have in, yeah. in relation to like those areas the, 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 the those steve two. brinster and mike yep. moser crowd yeah it's it's fun golf to watch as we're going to move into hole four, the first par four on the course at 471. A lot of trees you got to miss here. Yeah, players are really going to try and land, I would say, about, you know, 90 to 100 feet away from this to really just, you know, hopefully get the easy birdie. Uh, the left gap, it, I would say, is the more favorable one there. Yeah, it looks like you kind of just want to throw maybe a little more understable of a disc but release it on a hyzer and kind of get it to flip up and carry a little bit yep use that entire fairway that entire hallway to um you know let the disc move to get as much distance as possible does look like if you kick early though off any of those trees there to the left it's i mean it could pose a challenge for you to get up and down for par yeah and this gap off the tee is it looks pretty large here but it's not it's about as wide as the tee pad. And that just needs to miss the last tree there and great shot from Moser. Yep, that's a great shot to be looking at getting a birdie there. Yeah, like you said, he probably only has maybe like 100 feet there to finish it out. Yeah, a little chip shot and MJ loves it as you can tell. We're yeah. already seeing those walk-offs. Yeah. So he hit a little early, and so you can see that if you're if you're back there halfway down the fairway, you got a tough up shot. Yeah, and he's really lucky he hit that tree because that was going to cut roll over to the left of the fairway. Uh, it was going to give him a really hard look for birdie. So we see the forehand out of Michael Johansson. Nice little flex, just missing that tree. Easy three. Since wind is, I didn't. I guess I didn't know he really threw forehands. He, he pulls them out every now and then. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty good yeah. for not really pulling it, them out. He ever. says it's serviceable. Is that what he Yeah, oh, but it's a little That's it's way a, more than serviceable. It's a little better than serviceable, in my opinion. His backhand's so good, he doesn't really need it, but that is more than serviceable. So Fish misses those trees. He's going to kind of just finish over there to the right of the, uh, the green. And Moser, just a very... Pretty close approach, and I would say that's kind of a little bit of a blunder hitting those trees there, kicking them down. Yeah, there's a couple holes like this where there's trees on the green within the third, within circle one. Mm -hmm. So your upshots really got to be on point. Yeah, like even this with Villa, he has to worry about that tree right there. I yep. mean, if that hits the left side, kicks him down where Moser is. I mean, kind yeah, of have a tester tell, coming back. It's a little downhill here, so you know, easy to hit and roll. There's All a right. great butt out of him. All right, it's good to see him get on the board with a with a good putt. Yep. Looked like uh, outside the circle putt there. Tap in for MJ. Fish should do the same. And Villa's going to be tapping in for the par. It's only like those weird uphill headwind putts or something. 
something like that. Uh -huh. I'll use it for this. Okay. <laughs> or when I lack confidence in my regular putt. Hi guys, Ricky Wysocki here. We are starting the Saki Bomb Foundation. The main goal for me is to really give back to the sport, start kids from a young age, and expose them to the great sport of disc golf that we all love. We got a website going, SakiBombFoundation.org. There's lots of different things you can do on the website. I've heard uh, the older generation of disc golfers saying, I wish I would have started disc golf when I was younger, and now I'm able to start these kids off at a young age through my foundation. It really means a lot to me, and it means a lot for the sport to donate and go to the website, SakiBombFoundation.org. All right, we're gonna jump back in at hole five, 441 foot par four. Looks like this one's gonna have a slight dog leg to the right, probably another 300 feet to the fairway there, going pretty straight. Yeah, in my opinion, this is a two shot hole, even though it's only 441 feet. You can get there in one, but I really think it's just, you know, too easy, about 220 shots and you're looking at birdie. It looks like Fish has a driver. He's gonna try to really bite a lot off here. Yeah, sure did. And it looks like he made it through that left side a little yeah. bit. Looks like you can get pretty aggressive with a flex forehand if you have it, if you're really trying to push it. But like you're saying, I mean, it's a two shot hole, so it's almost better just to throw it the, the 200 feet, 250, and then have your second shot. Yeah, so where he just landed, even if he kicked a little right, he still has, you know, maybe 300 feet to the basket, so. And we're going to see another forehand out of MJ. Sure. Great shape. And I think that's probably dead center fairway up there. Yeah. There's that 250 I talked about. <laughs> There's that serviceable forehand he was very, talking about. Very, very serviceable. Phil is going to try to look like really nice hyzer flip. That stays right. Mm. Faded out a little bit, but if it fades out and gets down the hill, he might have a you know, pretty easy scramble out of there. There's parts of this course that the rough is pretty easy to get out of, but as you can see on the first couple holes, there's very much you know parts that are very rough. Mm -hmm. And this being a pretty new course, I think over time we'll probably see a change in that where maybe the rough that's a little easy will become very easy and then the other rough might kind of get cut down a little bit as we go. So that was a great shot from Moser. He should be looking at an easy three. Look at that MJ center cut. Nice little turn over to the basket here. A little early there from him. And like you said, if you kind of, if you get a little bit over here, you almost have kind of like a little bit of a hyzer straight line that you can kind of get up there with. So not too much danger, it looks like, for, for Villa there. Yeah, you can see there's definitely trouble, but there's also quite a few different possibilities of lines as we see fish going up and over with what looks wow. like Wow. Great parks it. Great putter, Andy shot. And I was going to say, it looks like if you get left of that path, you're like in jail. Like you were just saying, it's not good over there. And he looks like he finds a great line. Yep. And MJ cans it. He's rolling today so far, four through five. Yeah, his putter is working. This is a great distance from Moser. Let's see if get it down. Just sit down now. There we go. What is your opinion on uh, greens that have a lot of trees within the circle? Is that something you find as a challenge that you enjoy, or do you see that as? I don't know. I have a hard time making a call on that one because I think that. I like the idea of having the circle clear of trees, but I also, you know, understand like it can't always be that way. So I would say as long as it's not like cluttered with trees within the circle, it's fine. Like if there's like, you know, three to five, mm -hmm. but like if there's like 10 within the circle, I think some of those need to be cleaned up. Yeah. You can use this kind of strategically place kind of, 
I don't want to say bunkers, but like a spot where you had kind of have to straddle out, maybe make it a little more challenging. A yeah, bush maybe here like or there. on one side there's like mm. three next to each other or something, creating a wall at like twenty to twenty five feet. But I think there should be a, a somewhat clear area to like land your shot and putt from. Mm. Let us know in the comments what you think. I think that's kind of a mixed opinion there. I think people kind of lean both ways on that. I would agree. We're here at hole six, uh, 258 foot par three, wide open shot. Players are going to throw whatever they feel most comfortable with. And Yeah, this is a must get here for these guys. And Andrew is four down on the last four, which is really nice. That should not be any trouble for him. He's probably looking at about a 25 footer. There you go. MJ looks like he's going with a putter. He's kind of going a little more at it, and it's going to be right in there. Well within the circle. It looked a little left from Moser and a little short, but pretty short hole. I mean, he should be 40 feet at least, with it well within his distance for the putt. These players, if they don't put it inside the circle, are not going to be happy with themselves. Yeah. It's these types of holes that could really get to the very uh, skilled level there. Is it's, it's almost so easy of a hole that it's a must get if you're not getting in the circle or... You have given yourself a, a putt like this. I feel like these holes are a little break agitated. You. Yeah, you could get a little agitated. If you miss these holes, like these holes are the ones that can easily break you over, mm -hmm. like, you know, bogeying like a hard hole per se. This hole is actually aced on my uh, card during the round by Ethan. Very cool. Shout Congrats. out to Ethan. You said that you were six down through six, and then he took the box with an ace, right? That's yeah, a... I was, yeah, five down through five park this hole he steps up second and just aces it in my face to wow. steal the box wow. it was a great shot though yeah that's intimidating this fish is gonna and villa here are both gonna miss not and, like you said this is a musket mm -hmm. yeah you're most likely losing strokes to the field on that with the par i would guess this is playing at like two five range maybe even it was 0. .6 under par, and it was the third easiest hole for the day. Uh, a lot of birdies out there. Yeah, and there's a good putt. So Moser picks up another birdie. MJ's going to get a turkey here. And, I mean, he's, he's showing us today, like, what we know he's capable of. Yeah, it's, it's actually really fun to watch these top-level guys attack this course. Um, I'm very confident we're going to see some really low numbers here today and for the entire tournament. We're going to clean up here and move over to hole seven. Seven is a par four, so they're going to be throwing a long hyzer here and then a shot in. Wide open though here, so big hyzer from these guys. Poser's on the box. Looks like he's gonna rip a hyzer right over there on the fairway. Would you say kind of just getting around that corner a little more left is yeah so where he threw is going to be a good landing zone for anybody he m might be too far to the left but this fairway if you get out there you'll have a straight shot to the basket or maybe a slight turnover if you get too long there is a small window really where you have a good shot otherwise it gets kind of tight with how tight the gap is up here
Villa last up on the box. He's really the only one that's uh, not really showing any green on the card right now. So let's see if he can turn that around. That looks like a good shot to get him started on this hole. And I think we're, all of our players are going to have a look to get through this gap. Now, I'd hate to say it, but do you think... So we have a, a second cut in the grass here. If that was lined with OB, wow. how much more challenging do you think this course... That was a great shot from MJ. That was a good shot. I would... This course would play much harder. Yeah. Because when that's when that's OB and you're not able to just rip, you have the chance to saw it off early into the trees. So do you think it could pose a challenge here and maybe not play as a gimmick and could make the course harder and a little yeah. more technical with placement shots? Yep. I think there could be some OB here that would make the course um, more difficult in the places that you know it needs to have difficulty but they didn't have enough land to really you know mm. make more wooded holes which is you know just how it goes i would say on some of these holes you could just play the tall grasses ob and you know you're going to add a couple strokes to each nine mm -hmm. a little bit of separation there is villa actually didn't hit anything on that approach and ended up kind of circles edge to the right there that's fish with a great tee shot he was lined up yeah so like i was saying if you're right here your love and life whereas the other ones were a little short and a little deep mm -hmm. and they really had to finesse something through that gap yeah a couple turnovers there so he actually goes with the overhand so another thumber out of fish does he throw a lot of those Whoa. usually and yes he does moser but also makes really big putts like this that is good to that's see that's why they call him the deucer right there i yeah. bet because yeah. look at that and it's Delaware Deucer there, Nick. The full name next time. You got to get it the full I'm way. <laughs> that was a great putt from, from Moser. Is the Delaware Deucer uh, big putts him, too. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, he knows it, too. Yeah, Villa's not happy about that one. Man, that was great. That was an awesome putt. That, that's, those are the kinds of putts that get you around going. Oh, yeah. That's the type of putts that lift you up. I could bring your... Uh, eight down round to maybe like a 12 down 13 down this fish is able to get his birdie there a little low doesn't need many chains but ringed around the basket there that was a whew. barely sneaking over there i would there. say it's a little close for his uh comfort but hey it's in and Michael Johansson is feeling it. Six through seven is really good here. Villa just kind of needs to pick his head up, keep fighting. It's no stranger to uh, turning his rounds around. So we're gonna move into hole eight. Hole eight is one tree to miss. You're gonna either have a right or left gap. And once again, one of those holes that if we made the tall grass OB, put a little more difficulty here. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be just some Pretty straightforward hyzers from these guys. Like you said, this is ace run territory for these guys. Yeah. Like if you're feeling it. Another uh, standstill, so. The shots. Then, oh, that's so close, though. It's, yeah, it's two in the bullseye. It's, the hole is short, but that's still pinpoint accuracy is fun to watch. And this should scoot up just fine. Another one right down in there. And Villa looks like he might take the left gap. No, he's just teasing us. Ah. It's got to be. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, hey. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, but he doesn't need that. He's just going to go right under the basket. Doesn't need to putt. As MJ's going to get another green checkbox there. Seven through eight. And I would say with Fish making that, we could confidently say we can... Ooh, <laughs> such a gentleman. Just marking his disc for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's going to be a great star frame. Anytime the whole card's getting green, there's not what we can do but just cheer for him. Yep. 
those are some uh, pinpoint shots. <laughs> it was funny. He marked his disc and he didn't even use the mark. He still just put it from behind <laughs> his shot. Uh, so we're going to move into hole nine. So hole nine here, we're going to start to get into some of our holes that have OB. On the left hand side, you can see that white stake, but there will be an OB line running this back side of the hole. Most players are going to be throwing, I would say, a sidearm. Yeah. So MJ is going to get this one. He needs to get around that tree. Yep. So I think does. that's the shot there, though, is getting the height on it. So if anything, it's going to fade back mm -hmm. to the right and short of the green. So, you you know, secure a putt and you're safe. Yeah. yeah. I would say the miss is just a little too left, a little too long. There's a good shot. It's going to get cut short. Probably circle two, I would say. Looks like Fish changes his mind. Was it windy out here for the first day? It doesn't look, it looks pretty calm. Yeah, it was pretty calm for what the conditions were when we were all warming up, I would say. It was, rain was the prediction and, ooh, wow. That was good. I think he dissed up there and I think that's a good choice. I, In my opinion, this hole actually played longer than what it seemed, I would mm -hmm. say. So disking up, throwing a little higher. A little higher Maybe. speed disc to make mm -hmm. sure you got it all the way there. And That's looking, oh, mm -hmm. that's looking great from Villa. Still, he should be right down there. He should, yep, have a putt. And here's another one of those greens where inside the, you know, circle one, there's quite a few trees. So Ooh. putting is not easy out here. <laughs> no, I really like this one, though, because it, like I said, it, it creates kind of this cool little bunker here on the like, short right. So if you do end up short right, there is, you get a little penalized for that yep. if you do miss that. Yep. But we have fish that went, you know, deep right, you could say, and he's got an open look from about 30, 35. Oh, no. Oh, those ones sting. Yeah, just a little bit right. Otherwise, that would have caught, I would say. Joe, eight through nine. Putter's been on for this front nine. He has been looking red hot. That is a, that's a good start on any course you play. <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy shooting that full round at my local course. <laughs> uh, eight down for a round scrape by itself, but... Villa's able to get a couple green there to finish out his front nine, kind of keeping pace with everyone. Poser's going to be the last one to tap in here as this is going to kind of wind down our front nine. As you said, we're going to start getting a little more into the woods as we're going to take a look at the leaderboards. Michael Johansson just one off from that perfect front nine that he had there. Andrew Fish, a couple pars in there, as well as Moser. Villa, a couple pars in the middle, but I'm sure we'll see him grab a couple more birdies here on the back. As look at your name up there, seven down. Looking really good. We are up there at the top. I had a good front line myself. Very cool. All right, well, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Once again, my name is Chris. Beside me, we have Nick. Thanks for having me, and uh, we'll see you on the back nine, folks.